الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد continue our readings and the work نصيحتي للنساء my advice to the women by أم عبد الله الوادعية حفظها الله تعالى we have began reading in our previous class the author she mentioned حفظها الله تعالى لا بأس بخروج المرأة لحاجتها that there is no problem for the woman to leave out of her home in order in order to take care of some of her needs in order to take care of some of her needs although the last statement that we mentioned with regards to this subject the author she says she mentioned Hafidahullahu Ta'ala that indeed whenever a woman stays at home she will be able to take care of the duties of her household and the rights of her husband, raising the children and doing a lot of good deeds. But when a woman frequently goes out of her house and he unnecessarily, then she will be negligent with regards to performing her obligations. Again, to emphasize, again to emphasize that this issue here, the permissibility of the woman leaving her home, this is for a need. This is for a need, not for something that is not considered a need, especially for something that is considered impermissible or lowly. And this is what she's going to indicate now, discussing a topic that is related. She says, Hafizahullahu ta'ala wa fi zamanina hadha talaqqaf al-muslimuna fikratan dasisa min a'da'i al-islam wa hiya masalatu al-intikhabat fa'awjabu al-khuruja ala al-mar'ati lil-intikhabat li al-intikhabat and in our days, in this contemporary time the Muslims are being confronted with evil ideologies from the enemies of al-islam such as the issue of casting ballots, and he meaning the issue, the issue of elections and taking votes to appoint leaders and people of authority in the society. Leaders and people of authority in the society. So in this, in this manner they have required and made an obligation for the woman to leave her house in order to participate in casting her vote and in the, these elections and the likes. She says, And the fact that the woman leaves out of her house originally is something that is permissible. Again, like that which has proceeded. But the means, they have the rulings of the intents and the goals. The means, they have the rulings of the intents, goals and the aims. فَلَمَّا كَانَ الْخُرُوجُ هُنَا فِي مَعْسِيَةٍ صَارَ الْخُرُوجُ مُحَرَّمًا So here, since leaving out of the house, referring to the woman, so here, since leaving out, the, out of the house is to perform an action of disobedience, now it has become impermissible and forbidden. Now it has become impermissible and forbidden. So she says, وَإِنِّي ذَاكِرَةٌ بِأَوْنِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ نُبْذَةً عن الانتخابات وبيان أنها ليست بمشروعة. and I'm going to mention now, seeking the help of Allah Azza wa Jal, some affairs about uh, some affairs about voting and holding elections, and clarify that they are that this is and clarify that this is not legislated. ليهلك من هلك عن بينة ويحيا من حي عن بينة. in order for a person that will be destroyed, to be destroyed upon clarity and the one who will live and a safe life, they will live upon clarity. And he meaning so that the issue will be clear. And a person who follows their whims and desires, they will do that upon knowledge. While they know that is forbidden. They will choose that and prefer that way. 
so that they can take <coughs> their place in the, the avenue that they have chosen and thus have the recompense that they have worked for. And likewise, the one who will be safe from that will be safe upon clarity and insight. وكل ما سأذكره في شأن الانتخابات مقتطف من بعض أشرطة الوالد حفظه الله وربما أزيد شيئا لم يذكره. She mentions now حفظه الله تعالى that everything I'm going to mention here and with regards to the impermissibility of having elections, with regards to the impermissibility of holding elections and voting and taking ballots. Everything I'm going to mention, mention here about these elections is taken from some of the cassettes of my father. The cassette tapes, meaning the recordings that were recorded from the lessons of her father, Sheikh Muqbil ibn Hadi al-Wadi'i, rahimahullah ta'ala. So the information she's sharing here is that what she learned from her father. She says, and likewise, and likewise maybe I'll add some additional benefits as well, that which he did not mention. That which he did not mention. So she says, فَأَقُولُ وَاللَّهُ الْمُوَثِّقُ لِلصَّوَابِ And I say now, and Allah, He is the one who grants success to that which is correct. الْإِنْتِخَابَاتُ لَيْسَتْ بِمَشْرُوعًا That holding elections, ballots and voting is not legislated. لِأَنَّ النَّبِيَّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ لَمْ يَفْعَلْهَا وَلَا خُلَفَاؤُهُ الرَّشِدُونَ وَلَا غَيْرُهُ مِنَ الصَّحَابَةِ رِضْوَانَ اللَّهِ رِضْوَانُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْجَمِيعِ ولا التابعون لهم بإحسان في القرون المفضلة ولا غيرهم وهم أعلم الناس بالسنة وأكمل حبا لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم منا ومنكم. So she says again that the holding elections is not legislated because the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he did not do that nor those rightly guided خلفاء after him. nor other than them from the companions. May Allah be pleased with all of them. And likewise, not the tabi'un, those who follow them precisely and correctly in faith from those noble generations, from those three virtuous and noble generations, and likewise, not those after them as well, and from the people upon the proper path and understanding about Islam. And they are the most knowledgeable of the people with regards to the sunnah, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and their love is more complete and their love is more complete for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam than our love for him and your love for him than our love for him and your love for him so she says فَعُلِمَ أَنَّ إِحْدَاثَ الْإِنْتِخَابَاتِ أَمْرٌ مَا أَنْزَلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ وَاعْتِرَاضٌ عَلَى شَرْعِ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so now it is known here because This issue of voting and casting votes and ballots and opinions in order to decide who will be the leader or who will be the ruler or who will have authority or who will have position or who will sit in the chair and the likes like this because this was not performed in the time of the Prophet wasallam, nor in his companions nor in those first three generations and likewise was not understood by anyone following them way, following their ways. From the, from the righteous and pious Muslims after them, radiallahu anhum, then it's clear now that this is something that's an, that is an innovation. That innovating and introducing these ballots and these elections, this is something that Allah, He did not reveal any authority with regards to. And likewise, this is uh, showing opposition to the legislation of Allah Azza wa Jal and to His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is showing opposition and uh, being in conflict or in opposition with the legislation of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَالنَّبِيُّ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam قَدْ بَلَّغَ الْبَلَاغَ الْمُبِينَ وَمَا تَرَكَ طَرِيقًا يُوسِرُ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ يُوسِرُ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ إِلَّا وَدَلَّ أُمَّتَهُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ وَحَذَّرَ أُمَّتَهُ مِنَ الطُرُقِ أَلَتِي هِيَ مُقَرِّبَةٌ إِلَى الْعَذَابِ And uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has indeed, he has indeed conveyed the clear message. And he, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he conveyed the message of Al-Islam, that which was revealed to him from his Lord, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in entirety, in entirety. And he did not leave off any pathway that will lead to paradise, except that he showed his ummah and led them to that way. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he warned the Ummah likewise Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from all of the pathways that will draw one near to the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal. She says, فَفِي صَحِيحِ مُسْلِمٍ 
أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ما بعث الله من نبي إلا كان حقا عليه أن يدل أمته على خير ما يعلمه لهم وينذرهم شر ما يعلمه لهم She mentions here the narration which is in Sahih Muslim and this is from the hadith of Amr ibn al-As radiyallahu anhu that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that Allah he has never sent the Prophet except it was a right upon him that he would lead his nation to the good that he knows for them and that he would warn them of the evil that he knows for them and this was a right from all of the prophets and messengers that it was incumbent upon them and a trust that they were responsible that they were responsible for alayhim salatu wassalam that they would lead and inform and direct their followers and those whom they were sent to to all of the good that they know to all of the good that they know and all of the things that will be beneficial for them that they will not conceal or hide anything from that and that they will warn them from all of the evil likewise that they knew and they will not hide or conceal any of these affairs rather they will convey the message that has been revealed to them entirely and purely sincerely seeking the face and the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jalla and the head of them and the best of them is the seal of all prophets the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so no doubt he has conveyed the message entirely he has conveyed the message entirely sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this methodology and this methodology of uh, appointing leaders and rulers and people of authority whether in society whether in politics or whether in the religion was not established in this manner it was not established by intikhabat it was not established by taswit by voting and by elections and taking ballots and the likes like this and in reality we will find that this is uh, making the truth and the falsehood equal and the people of truth and the people of falsehood equal allowing everyone to have an opinion and a vote some people they are pious and they're righteous and they have sound minds and intellects and they will hope for the best for themselves and for their brothers in al islam for their brothers and sisters in al islam and others they are misguided and they follow their desires and their whims to so to allow all of them to give their opinion and to vote this is putting the truth and the falsehood equal maybe the number of the people of falsehood desires and whims will be greater than those of piety and righteousness and therefore they will vote and elect to make alcohol allowed or weed marijuana allowed and permissible and the likes like this and this is in belittlement of the truth and the people of truth so making elections and taking votes and ballots and the likes like this is falsehood and not the way of al islam it's not the way of al islam whether there's a methodology that these affairs they return back to ahli halli wal aqd wal ilmi wal iman that these affairs there are these affairs they are referred back to the people of authority the people of sound mind and understanding religion and faith and they will they will make al mushawara they will make shura fi ma baynahum they will have consultation amongst themselves those people who have authority and those people who have rank and status and those people who have knowledge and position and those people who are known for their faith and their religion then these people they will make consultation amongst themselves and then select and choose and then select and choose just as the affair occurred after the death of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in those noble generations in those noble generations she says now shubhatun there's a doubt here and he's some of the people they mention we may be thinking how this issue and he, she came to this topic the whole topic that the whole topic is about the fact that it's allowed for the woman to leave her house in times of necessity or need whenever she has some needs and she cannot take care of those needs or fulfill them except by leaving her home that that this is allowed for her she's clarifying now and allah knows best in those days these may have this this issue have may have been may have been uh, widespread in uh, her lens uh, at this time of authoring this work in many of the the righteous women or the Muslim women were tried by the likes of the Sefer. But no doubt we can see that this is something in general, meaning that it's impermissible to vote. She's clarifying that. So to leave out to do that is impermissible and not allowed. So likewise, any other affair as well, Barakallah Fikum, that is not allowed to do. It's not allowed for a woman to set out of her house to, to do that. Rather, not even a man. Not even a man. But the origin for the woman is that she will remain in her home is that she will remain in her home except if she has a need. Except if she has a need. So the point is to clarify this and likewise to refute this doubt. And this is from the methodology of the enemies of Al-Islam to destroy Al-Islam and to, and to mislead its people. 
and to mislead his people by having uh, an, uh, an aim, focusing the aim on the women specifically, and likewise the children, the household, to tear them apart, and to cause confusion and chaos, and take them further, take them away from the proper understanding and application of their religion. So she says, Shubhatun, I doubt. Yakulu qa'iruhum, one of them they will say, Inna l'intikhabati ma mahtija laha ala ahdi rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, falihada lam tuf'al ala ahdihi. So now there's a doubt. One of them, he will say that elections, there was no need for them. Elections, taking ballots and casting votes in order to establish the leader or to decide, uh, to, to decide uh, critical decisions and the likes, this was not needed in the time of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So therefore, it was not performed in his time. So therefore, they were not performed in his time. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a doubt some of them they may present. So she says, وَالرَّدُّ عَلَى هَذِهِ shubha," And uh, the refutation, clarification of this doubt, and the intiqabat, لَوْ كَانَتْ مَشْرُوعَةً لَكَانَتْ صَالِحَةً وَلَفَعَلَهَا أَنْ نَبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ وَحَثَّنَا عَلَيْهَا That this elections and voting, if they were legislated, then they would have been proper for all times. And he correct in those days likewise, and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would have performed that and he would have encouraged the people to establish them. وَأَمَّا قَوْلُكُمْ مَحْتِيجَ لَهَا فِي الزَّمَنِ النَّبُوِي فَهَذَا غَيْرُ الصَّحِيحِ And as for the, the statement of the one who says that there was no need for elections or this methodology of uh, establishing positions, opinions, or establishing people in positions of, of leadership, and the likes like this. This was not needed in the prophetic time. This is not correct, she says. This is not correct, she says. And he, so, she's not going to mention the evidences for this, and we must pay attention to the aspect of the evidence. Some of these narrations are long. Some of them are short, and they are about different topics and issues. But we will not focus on the subject matter, but rather upon the point that is at hand, to clarify that there were many opportunities and uh, the issue of elections could have been implemented in the time of the Prophet وسلم, but he never did that. But he never did that. So she says, وَمِنْ مِنَ الْأَدِلَّةِ عَلَى بُطْلَانِهِ وَمِنَ الْأَدِلَّةِ عَلَى بُطْلَانِهِ And from the evidences of the falsehood of this statement, and yani that there's no need to have in, uh, there's no need to have elections in the time of the Prophet. There's no need to cast votes and to take uh, take about it and the lights like this in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this down here, the evidences that clarify the falsehood of that. Number one, and the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, لما أمر لما أمر أصمة ابن زيد دخل في نفوس كثير من الصحابة. فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إنكم تطعنون إنكم تطعنون في إمرته في إمرته وإنه لخليق بالإمارة وقد كنتم تطعنون في إمارة أبيه. she says أخرجه البخاري ومسلم أخرجه البخاري ومسلم. this narration is narrated by البخاري and مسلم. So whenever the Prophet وسلم, appointed Asama ibn Zayd anhuma, as the leader and he for uh, a military excursion, at this time he is very young, 16 or 17 years old, anhum, but he was brave and courageous and very profound and, and, and very solid and sound and profound in his understanding of the religion. So uh, anhum, the Prophet وسلم, appointed him as the leader of the army of the battalion as the leader of the Muslim army at this particular time. So this is what the topic is about. So whenever the, the Prophet وسلم, appointed Usama ibn Zayd anhuma, as the leader, some thoughts entered to the hearts of many of the companions. Any some bad thoughts about, uh, about this issue, why he is being selected as the leader. So the Prophet وسلم, he said to them, you are objecting to his leadership. He is indeed deserving of leadership. And you did, and indeed you did object before to the leadership of his father. And some of the companions, they thought that maybe he is not qualified. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is clarifying that indeed he is qualified and this is why he had been selected. So she says here, so she says here, وَوَجْهُ الدِّلَالَةِ مِنَ الْحَدِيثِ أَنَّ النَّبِيَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ لَمْ يَقُلْ لَهُمْ إِذَا كُنْتُمْ لَا تَرَضَوْنَا بِإِمْرَأَتِهِ 
إذا كنتم لا ترضون بامرأتي 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 أسامة فنقيم انتخابات إذا كنتم لا ترضون بامرأتي أسامة فنقيم الانتخابات So the point of evidence from this narration with regards to our subject she says from the hadith, from the hadith is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he did not say to them oh, since you're not pleased with the leadership of Usama Allahu Anhum you're not and you're objecting to his authority then we should establish a vote then we should establish a vote and make elections and make elections this was not established here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam rather he was a leader and he chose and he appointed whom he found to be suluhu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this is how that affair was established Number two, she says, وَفِي صَحِي مُسْلِمْ لَمَّا أُسِرَ الْأُسَارَ فِي غَزْوَةِ بَدْرٍ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ لِأَبِي بَكْرٍ وَعُمَرٍ And in Sahih Muslim, whenever the prisoners were taken captives during the Battle of Badr, the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said to Abi Bakr and Umar, مَا تَرَوْنَ فِي هَأُولَيْهِ الْأُسَارَ مَا تَرَوْنَ فِي هَأُولَيْهِ الْأَسَارَ What do you say? What, what is your view regarding these captives? What is your view regarding these captives? فَقَالَ أَبُوْ بَكَرَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ يَا نَبِيَ اللَّهُ قُمْ بَنُ الْعَمِّ وَالْعَشِيرَ أَرَى أَنْ نَأْخُذَ مِنْهُمْ فِدْيَةً فَتَكُونُ لَنَا قُوَّةً عَلَى الْكُفَارِ فَعَسَى أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُمَ اللَّهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ فَعَسَى أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُمَ اللَّهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ So Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه, he says, O oh, Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they are our kith and our kin. I mean they are they are our relatives. They are from they're our brothers and our relatives. I think you should release them after getting from after taking a ransom. I think that we should take a ransom for them and then release them after that. This will be a source of strength to us against the disbelievers. And if they take the money as a ransom and the likes like this. And uh, maybe Allah will guide them after that to Al Islam. And then maybe Allah will guide them after that to to Al Islam. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ At this time, the Messenger of Allah صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ He says, مَا تَرَى يَبْنَ الْخَطَّابِ what, what is your view? What is your view in this affair? O oh, Ibn al-Khattab, speaking to Umar رضي الله عنه قُلْتُ لَا وَاللَّهِ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And this is the narration of Umar. He says, قُلْتُ لَا, لا, لا وَاللَّهِ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ مَا أَرَى الَّذِي رأى أبو بكر ولكني ولكني أرى أن تمكننا أن تمكننا فنضرب أن تمكننا فنضرب أناقهم فتمكن عليا من من أقيل فيضرب عنقه وتمكنني من فلان نسيبا لعمر فأضرب عنقه فإن هؤلاء أئمة الكفار وصناديدهم وصناديدهم so uh, after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he asked Umar radiallahu anhu what is his view? He said, No, by Allah, O Messenger of Allah, I do not hold the same view as Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. I am of the opinion that you should hand them over to us and that we may that we may that we may kill them, that we may strike them in the necks. And that we should kill them. And these captives from these enemies, the these soldiers that were taken captive in the battle of Badr. He says, I, I but rather I believe that you should hand them over and that we should kill them. That we should strike them in their necks. That you should hand over Aqil to Ali. Aqil to Ali because that's his relative. And that he should and that he may strike him in his neck. And that you should hand over such and such who is a relative to Umar, to me. You you should hand over such and such to me, who was a who was a relative of Umar radiallahu and who and he says so that I may strike him in his neck meaning so that I may so that I may I may kill him so that I may kill him and then uh, at this time فَهَوِيَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ مَا قَالَ أَبُو بَقَرْ وَلَمْ يَهْوَى مَا قُلْتُ so he says رضي الله عنه عمر that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he was inclined to uh, before that uh, before that Umar he said radiallahu anhu that you should hand over such and such to me and a yeah, relative to me so that I may strike him in the neck and he, and he said this is because they are leaders of disbeliefs they are the leaders of the disbelievers and the veterans amongst them and he from the the heads of those disbelievers and uh, and doing away with them would be 
a great victory for, for the Muslims. So this is what he had chosen. So then after that he says, radiallahu anhu, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he approved the view of Abu Bakr and did not approve what I said. And he did not approve what? What I said. So then he says, radiallahu anhu, فَلَمَّا كَانَ مِنَ الْغَدِي جِئْتُ فَإِذَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمُ أَبُوْ بَكْرٍ قَاعِدَيْنِ يَبْكِيَانِ He said that whenever it was the next day, I came and I found the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم and Abu Bakr رضي الله عنهما, both of them sitting down crying. قُلْتُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ He said, I said, O Messenger of Allah, صلى الله عليه وسلم, أَخْبِلْنِي مِنْ أَيِّ شَيْءٍ تَبْكِي أَنْتَ وَصَاحِبُكَ فَإِنْ وَجَدْتَ فَإِنْ وَجَدْتُ بُكَاءً بَكَيْتُ وَإِلَّا تَبَكَيْتُ فَإِنْ وَجَدْتُ بُكَاءً بَكَيْتُ وَإِلَّا تَبَكَيْتُ مَعَكُمَا He said, O Messenger of Allah, صلى الله عليه وسلم, inform me, why are you crying for, you and your companion? He said, because if I find to cry, then I will cry along with you, and if not, I will try to cry, at least. فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أبكي للذي عرض علي صاحبك من من أخذه من فداء لقد عرض علي لقد عرض علي عذابهم أدنى من هذه الشجرة. He said, I weep for that what has happened to your companions from taking ransom for the prisoners. I was shown the torture to which they were subjected. It was brought to me as close as this tree. It was brought to me as close as this tree. Meaning it was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the, the view of Umar was the correct view. And that those people, they were not going to uh, accept Islam. That they were going to be punished. وَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ And Allah, He revealed the statement, مَا كَانَ لِي نَبِيًّا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ أَسْرَى حَتَّى يُثْخِنَ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَى قَوْلِهِ فَقُولُوا مِمَّا غَلِمْتُمْ حَلَالٍ طَيِّبًا فَأَحَلَّ اللَّهُ الْغَنِيمَةَ لَهُمْ And then Allah the Most High, He revealed the verse, It is not for a prophet that he should have prisoners of war and free them with ransom until he had made great slaughter amongst his enemies in the land and until he had given, been, been granted great victory and authority over his enemies in the land. And from this verse continue until the statement of Allah the Most High, So enjoy what you have gotten of the spoils of war, lawful and good. And Allah, He made the spoils of war and Allah, He made the spoils of war lawful for them. Now she mentions, So she says, and the, the means or the point of evidence, the aspect of evidence from this narration to our topic is that they did not say let's call the fighters in the path of Allah and the people of Medina to gather and everyone cast his vote and everyone cast his vote and should we take ransom or should we kill the uh, or, or should we execute the captives should we take ransom for the captives or execute them so here in the situation the Prophet وسلم, did not suggest to gather the people together and take and take votes and take a ballot and have an election what they should do in this circumstance what they should do in this circumstance so the point she's trying to make is to clarify that the opportunity arose in a number of different circumstances and situations to have elections and to take votes of the people to take the votes of the people and that's not the case rather the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would make mushawara he would make consultation with the people who are qualified you know, with the people who are qualified, the people who have status, the people who have rank, the people who have experience, the people who have knowledge, the people who have faith. The people who have, have faith. He would take their consultation and then from there he would listen to all of their opinions and then he will make a decision himself. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the people will move upon that. And the people will move upon that and this is the proper manner of handling these affairs. And this is the proper manner of handling these affairs. She says number three. وروى البخاري ومسلم من حديث سهر بن حنيف رضي الله عنه أنه قال اتهموا الرأي فلقد رأيتني يوم أبي جندل ولو, ولو أستطيع أن أرد على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أمره لرددت والله ورسوله أعلم 
وما وضعنا أسيافنا على عواتقنا لأمر يفضعنا إلا أسهلنا بنا إلى أمر نعرفه قبل هذا الأمر ما نسد منها خصما إلا تفجر علينا خصم ما ندري كيف نأتي له ما ندري كيف نأتي له She mentions now another narration in Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Sahar ibn Hunayf radiyallahu anhu that he said blame your own opinions blame your own opinions and he accused your own opinions I saw myself on the day of Abu Jandal inclined to fight the day of Abu Jandal is the day of al Hudaybiyah. the day of Hudaybiyah, whenever there was a truce that was made with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the, in the, mush, in the mushrikun of Quraysh that uh, they would not make Umrah that year and likewise that anyone leaving their side coming to them from the Muslims they would send them back and anyone coming uh, and anyone coming from there they were not have leaving the Muslims and going to the to, to the disbelievers they would not have to send them back and they had all these different conditions that were set in this treaties that apparently outwardly were against the Muslims or not in their best favor not in their best favor and there was a man named Abu Jandal there was a man named Abu Jandal and his name is Al As ibn Suhair ibn Amr he had, he had accepted Islam in Mecca and he was tortured and punished for his Islam and he was taken a captive and a prisoner because he was a Muslim. He was tortured and on the day of Hudaybiyah he had broken out of his shackles and he had came fleeing to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after they made this truce and this treatise, he came and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent him back sent him back and he said, oh Muslims, are you going to send me back to the hands of the disbelievers after all that I have faced from their torture and their hardship? Uh, from their torture and their hardship. And some wordings of this, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ya Abba Jandil, O Abba Jandil, Isbir Wahtasib, be patient and seek the reward from Allah. فَإِنَّا لَا نَغْلِيرُ Because we will never betray the trust. We will never betray the contract and the treaties that we have, the conditions that we have set. And he said, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ جَعِرٌ Indeed, Allah is going to make a way out for you from this hardship and difficulty. So this was something that the many of the believers, they were ready, they were ready to advance and to fight and to defend and, and, and to save him from that hardship that he's facing. But this was a, this was a contract that was made with the Prophet wasallam. So this is why he's referring to this day as the day of Abi Jandal instead of the day of Al-Hudaybiyah. The day, if they said Yom Al-Hudaybiyah, Yom Sul Hudaybiyah, this is well known. This is well known and this event is well known. But he's referring to it as the day of Abi Jandal because this event here was from the most severe on the hearts of the believers. That they seen their brother coming and fleeing from their hands after being tortured and taken captive. And he's fleeing with shackles and chains. And he's trying to seek refuge and safety in the hands of the believers. And here he is in front of them and they have to turn him back and put him back in their hands. This was very hard on their hearts and very difficult for them to face. And many of them were ready to fight, even from them, Umar, on that day, عنه, but the Prophet ﷺ, he had revelation. And uh, this was in the best interest and in the best affair. And Allah, he considered this truce and this treaty as a fetah, a fit, a great victory, a great, a great victory. So this is what Sahal ibn Hunayf عنه, he's referring to. So he says, I saw myself on the day of Abu Jandil inclined to fight. And he himself, he, he himself, whenever he's seen this treaty is going down, he himself was ready to fight. And in his mind, it's, it's better for him to fight than to take a treaties and to take these conditions that were set in front of them. He says, and if I had the power to refuse the order of the Messenger of Allah on that day, at that moment, then I would have refused it. And I would have fought the, the, the disbelievers bravely. And they, they wanted to fight. They wanted to fight. Allah and His Messenger know better. He says, but, but Allah and His Messenger know better. Whenever we put our swords on our shoulders for any matter that terrified us, our swords led us to an easy, agreeable solu solution before the present situation. And he meaning whenever any, they fight, they will fight bravely and diligently and Allah will grant them victory. And Allah will grant them victory in the likes like this. But he says, uh, 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 he says, but when we mend the breach in one side, it opened in another. And when we did not know what to do about it. So, yani, in any case, this issue here was very difficult for them. Was there, it was very difficult for them, for, for them. We're signing these treaties and taking this, this contract with the disbelievers and accepting these conditions and the likes like this. This was hard and difficult for them. It was a great situation, but in the end, it wound up being a great blessing and benefit for the believers. 
a great blessing and benefit for the believers. So she says, So here they, they differed. They differed. The, the Sahaba differed. Many of them, they did not want to sign these treaties. Rather, they were ready to fight. Rather, they were ready to fight. A number of them. A number of them. And they differed about this issue. And she says, but and not one of them says, let's take a vote. Let's take a vote. No, 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 no. We need to, we need to have elections. What, what's your opinion? What do you think? Well, well, how many? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Should we fight them or not? This didn't happen in this manner. And uh, no doubt, this, if, if it would happen, this is a place to happen. And in voting and taking elections is a time whenever there are great decisions that are decisive to be made. And the people, they differ about that. This is the time to vote. What do you think? What do you say? Let me, let me hear your opinion. L l like this. But the issue of voting, again, it goes back to allowing, it goes back to making truth and falsehood equal. Because some people, their opinion is sound and proper and respected, and other people's opinions is thrown in the garbage and not respected whatsoever. Some people, because of their knowledge and because of the, what they're known from piety and because of what they're known for having firm positions and from a, a good biography and, and, and past and the likes like this, that uh, they are qualified to suggest uh, what to do in, in decisive affairs and, and, and places of hardship and leadership. And others, they're not known for that. Whether they're known for recklessness or they're known for foolishness. Or they have absolutely no qualification whatsoever. If they're going to have, for example, doctors and they're going to have surgery and the likes like this, that's very dangerous, heart surgery, for example. And they don't know if they should go forth with it or not because of the dangers that are involved in this particular situation. Are they going to ask the taxi, the taxi drivers and the bakers and, and the computer operators to, to vote whether they should go for it or not? Will they do that? If they did that, what would we say about them? They are playing games. Uh, they have no, they have absolutely no, what does the baker and, and the computer the engineer and a taxi know about heart surgery? Why are you going to take his vote for it? So what is the well, same thing? What do these people here know about running a government and establishing Islam huh? and calling to Allah and spreading the deen? What do they know about that? What do they know about that? They don't know anything. So why would they be allowed to vote? Why would they be allowed to vote? Whether the people of authority and sound mind and sound deen and creed, they're the ones who will make the, 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 the decisions and they are the ones who their opinions will be taken and their consulta and consultation will be made with them. And then the one who has the authority, he would choose seeking the help from Allah Azza wa Jal and then be firm. This is the methodology here. Now, number four, she says, وَكَانَ أَبُوْ بَكَرْ يَرَى بني حنيف بني حنيفة الذين قاتلهم في زمنه وعمر لا يرى يعني لا يرى ذلك فلم يقولوا ندعو الناس ونسوت ومن كفرت الأسوات معه اتبعناه وهذه بعض الأمثال على ذلك So likewise she mentioned as well حفيظه الله that Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه in the time of his خلافة whenever he gained authority he found that the tribe of Hanifa, the tribe of Bani Hanifa, that he fought them in his days that they should make them slaves, that they, they should take them captives, and they would be slaves. And they would take them into captives. And he thought this particular tribe from the Arabs, that uh, the Muslims they fought in those days, he found them to be disbelievers and that he would take them captives. That he would take them captives in his time. Radiallahu anhu, but Umar he did not find to take them captives. In this particular issue, Umar he disagreed with him. In this issue, and they had a battle and a fight with Bani Hanifa, and then after the battle is over, they had uh, captives. So Abu Bakr he he decided to make them slaves, and uh, Omar he said, "No, we should not do this." So here at this time, not one of them said, "Let's call the people and take votes, and whoever has the most votes, we're going to choose his decision." This is not any something established. The point is again to refute the doubt, so that we're not lost. What is the doubt? The doubt is that, no, no, it's okay to have elections now because the only reason there was no in elections in the time of the Prophet is because it's not needed then. It's not needed then. Because the point here is to clarify that the ruling for having elections is that it's not legislated. And the evidence for that is not, it was not performed by the Prophet nor the, the companions. 
عنهم, nor those noble generations after them and those first three generations nor anyone upon their way after that so then the doubt comes but it wasn't needed in those days the opportunity didn't arise in those days but here in these examples and there's many others likewise similar like this it's clear that the opportunity to take votes and have an election to decide the affairs was there was there but that methodology was not selected nor chosen that methodology was not selected, chosen, nor followed. Nor followed. Rather, this is something that is introduced into the Muslim lands and the Muslim minds by way of the disbelievers. By way of the disbelievers. She says, These are some of the examples in this. These are some of the examples in, in this. She says, she says, so the Imam, the one who has the authority, the Imam, the, the Muslim ruler, and the Imam, he is going to make a decision and that which he finds to be the truth and we do not have any choice and it's not set in our hands in the deen of Allah. So she says here, مَا كَانَ لَهُ مَنْ خِيَرَةُ Subhanallah ta'ala amma yushrikun. And she mentions the statement of Allah the most high. Makana li mu'min wala mu'minatin idha qabadahu wa rasuluhu amran an yakuna lahumul khiyaratu min amrihim. The Imam should be firm on whatever he considers to be the truth. We are neither in charge nor people with choice regarding Allah's religion. Allah the most high, he says, no choice have they in any matter. Glorified be Allah and exalted above all that they associate as partners with him. And Allah the Most High, He says, It is not for a believer, man or a woman, when Allah and His Messenger have decreed a matter that they should have any opinion in, in their decision. So now, she mentions, If someone were to say, My intention is good. Me, I have a good intention, and I only want to aid the truth. And there's no way now to aid the truth except by way of having elections. Except by way of having elections. He says, for Jawab, the response, a niyatul hasana la buddha fiha and takuna muqayyadatan bil kitabi wa sunnah. Wa intikabatu fiha balarun mubin wa talbisat. She says, the response to this is that the good intention it must also be restricted to the book and the sunnah. You can't just have a good intention and, and do whatever you like. You have to have a good intention, no doubt, and that must be checked by the reins of the legislation in accordance to the book in the Sunnah, in accordance to the faham of the Salaf of the Ummah. And uh, elections is clear misguidance and uh, mixing of the affairs and deception and trickery. Deception and trickery. And if we look in our days, for example, how false and fake elections are, just in recent his history, there were elections in America and someone had more votes than another and then suddenly that person had a whole bunch of votes that nobody ever knew about or found and he was made the ruler. And then if we look who's selecting the rulers and the lights like this based upon the numbers of votes, even if we said the numbers of votes they really count, then look at the people that are being selected. The people, the majority of the people are misguided and follow their whims and desires and they will select and appoint somebody that will help them do that. That will help them do that. So that's why you find cartoon characters becoming leaders. What do you have to People who are cartoon characters becoming leaders. What do you have to And having authority and position because the people, that's what they want. They want to follow their desires and their whims and, and, they, and they like these affairs. So the fools, they will only elect a fool to lead them because that's what they like. That's what they like. So this is not the proper way. Not to mention that in reality, these numbers do not mean anything. There's just a deception and a way of trickery. And whoever they want in place is placed in place, regardless of how many numbers and how many votes. Do not be fooled. Do not be fooled. Some people, they say today, my vote counts. Inshallah, there's more to go about this. Barakallahu feekum. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.